Well, good, man. Well, listen, I uh, talked to you earlier. I texted you and said, I know nothing about breaststroke in terms of the, the high level performance of breaststroke and how to swim it technically. So I really want a lesson from you. I want you to teach me some breaststroke right now. Talk to yeah. me. Talk to me about the catch, first of all, then we'll move on to the kick, and then any other things that you think about that you think are relevant to breaststroke. So, so talk me through this. For sure. All right. Before we actually even do the catch, the most important thing, uh, and again, Russell Mark talks about this all the time, I, I think is timing with breaststroke. Um, breaststroke is the most – it presents the most resistance to the water, right, because you've got to drop your knees down mm -hmm. to bring your feet up to kick. Um, so you've got to spend the most time you can – out of that resistive position. So the general concept here is pull with your legs in the streamline, kick with your arms and torso in the streamline. So the better you can do that, the more like perfectly streamlined your whole torso can be while your legs are in that loaded position, uh, the more effective your kick is gonna be. Breaststroke's like all about just getting out of your own way. Um, so the best breaststrokers, Chupkoff and Petey right now, do this phenomenally well. Um, so yeah, we can go to the catch. Catch is pretty simple. It's honestly kind of like butterfly, except you got to stop halfway. So same concept, fingertips down, elbows up, and you're just pulling it straight back like a, like a butterfly pull. I mean, you can screenshot, oh, really? yeah, you can screenshot the best breaststrokers in the world at the, the top of their catch. And it honestly, it looks like they're about to do butterfly. It's why do, why, why, do, why do some people talk about sweep and, and curling in and around? Yeah, so I think, um, I think that that is the motion that ends up happening. The shape is sort of a circle. Mm -hmm. um, the, the sweep that I would talk about is, so you want to be real wide and powerful on your pull. Some people are a bit more narrow, but still like the elbows are going to be wider than the shoulders necessarily coming back. Mm -hmm. So the sweep that's going to happen is you got to transition from that catch phase into the recovery phase super quick because you can't recover like this or you're just pushing a ton of water out of the way and that's not good. So the sweep that I would talk about is going from elbows wide, powerful, to get out of the way, just slide the hands forward with no resistance. Um, and then what, are you, what are you doing with your head at that point in time? Well, as, as you're catching water, what, what are you doing with your eyes? Where are your eyes? Where's your chin? That sort of thing. Uh, as you're catching, I'd say it's similar to, to flyer freestyle, where you just want to be looking like slightly forward down the pool, not up and like breaking the spine, mm -hmm. um, but just a little forward for power. Okay, nice. Uh, all right, we'll continue. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so my goal, like how I would think about the stroke, is I want to like slide my forearms as far forward as possible before I start going into that catch. All right. So catch as far forward as possible. Once you get that catch, then the goal is to move your hips as far forward as possible while while you're catching. Right. So that's why you see some breaststrokers like really arch up. And it almost looks like they're throwing their head back. That's because they're trying to pull their hips forward as far as possible before they set up that kick, right? So I'm a, I'm a very kick-driven breaststroker. So each time I set my, my ankles and my feet in the water, I want them to be set as far forward down the pool each time as possible. So I'm trying to maximize that pull by pulling the hips forward with the legs straight. Then once I'm, I'm up here for the breath, then I'm bringing the feet up dropping the knees down for the kick and then trying to get myself streamlined back again before I start that kick back. As you're pulling your feet up, are your feet uh, in line or are they out turned out ready to, ready to catch and kick or uh, do you turn them out once, once they're up in that ready position? Yeah, I turn them out once they're up. Um, a lot of breaststrokers will actually try to turn their feet in. So like toes touching each other mm -hmm. on the way up and then get them out real quick. Mm -hmm. um, I do that like a little bit. I honestly think you can watch videos of like Amanda Beard from way back who, who may or may not have originated that technique. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, are you pulling your uh, ankles all the way up to your butt? Or I know that Petey's doing something a little different where it's not as not pulling up as high, right? What's going on with breaststroke these days? Um, yeah, so I mean, there, there are two schools of thought, right? So with Petey, he's just going to swim at max tempo possible. He, he generates a lot of momentum from, from his head drive forward, um, as well as from, from his arm recovery forward. That's a very important thing in breaststroke, um, is, is creating energy with that recovery. So with him, he's not going to be able to sustain his tempo if he gets, like, max range of motion on the breaststroke kick, right? 
Mm. Um, but then you have a guy like Chupkov who's going to swim at like 2.2 tempo for the first 100 meters of a race. So he needs that max range of motion, right? Because he wants to get all the distance he can out of every single kick. But if you're, if you're sprinting 100, then, you know, it depends on how strong you are, how necessary that is to shorten the range of motion. Um, PD, PD can get an incredible catch on the inside of his feet with that shortened range of motion, but that's very rare. So I would, um, you know, unless you, unless you're as good as PD, I, I would not recommend doing that if they're, if they're like breaststroke or kids listening to this podcast. But, um, if, if you're sprinting just for pure speed, then that may be something you get to. Sergio Lopez used to say something that interests me. He say, when you finish your kick, curl your toes to, to bring your feet up. Some people almost do almost like a like a dolphin kick at the back there and then sweep out. Like what what are you thinking of as you're bringing your feet together and getting your feet out of the way? Um, yeah, that's a common thing to do. So so when you do dolphin kick, right, you're trying to hold water on um, the top of your feet, right, as you mm -hmm. push down, and then you're trying to hold water on the bottom of your feet as you push up. It's similar like that for breaststroke, just because of like the angle of your knees and hips. The breaststroke kick actually goes down a little bit, right? It's not perfectly back or else okay. your feet would be on the surface. So it does go down and then you can hold a little bit of water on your feet mm. as you bring the legs up. If you then snap the knees down, uh, that's cheating. You can't do that. Yeah. So as you, as you sweep up, you can hold water then as long as you leave your legs in place after that. So um, the, I guess the, the more like technique -y way to do this is not actually by trying really hard with your hamstrings to push your legs up. It's just like tilting with your chest, just like the, the flow butterfly drill that some people do. I got a lot of questions, but before I forget, I'm, I'm just going to throw them out as they come into my head, but there's so many breaststroke techniques and, and uh, you know, I, we would get that similar with freestyle. Sometimes someone would come along and be doing, you know, someone to do a straight arm all of a sudden. And now, now everybody's like, we got to swim straight arm to swim faster. Right. With all the different breaststroke techniques, do you see something sometimes and start to question, am I doing the right thing? Should I be trying that? You know, or are you pretty fixed on your technique and you want to just stay on what you're doing? No, totally. I mean, I, I don't want to be that cocky of an athlete where I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this perfectly. I don't need to change. So, so yeah, obviously, like as people are, are getting faster, um, yeah, I'm, I'm watching. I'm noticing what they're doing differently. And breaststroke, I think, I don't want to overstep here, but I think it's the most individualized stroke. I mean, there are so many oh, different yeah. ways to swim breaststroke fast. I mean, you look at, yeah, you look at Chupkoff, you look at Petey, you look at uh, Arno Kaminga, uh, Zach Stabletti, Matt Wilson, um, Ilya. There, there's so many different and like weird ways to do this stroke fast. That's why it's, um, it's honestly like pretty hard to like even teach kids at clinics. There, there are certain commonalities that everyone's gotta do to be fast, like that fast arm recovery, um, the good timing I talked about where you're, you're pulling with your leg streamlined, kicking with your upper body streamlined. But, but aside from that, there's really a lot of ways to do it. Narrow pull, wide pull, uh, fast kick, huge range of motion kick. So it's, it's really, um, it's, it's just a constant puzzle to figure out and try new things. Are we trying to avoid uh, spreading our knees out really wide? I, I know, um, you know, the, the train of thought used to be keep your knees close together. Uh, are we still doing that? It, it depends, man, again, on how, how long and how fast you're going to swim for. PD's knees are pretty close together. Um, I think... I remember Michael Andrews' kick being pretty wide, and his kicks were really good. So again, it just depends on it's it's a trade off between power and then pushing through more resistance. So if the max, if the if the benefit in power you get from spreading your knees a bit wider and getting your feet up like closer to your butt is is if that is that going to outweigh the resistance that you're going to get from spreading your knees just a little farther apart, you you're going to have to play around with it, time some twenty fives kick, and, and figure that out. How do you correct somebody that is pulling their knees up towards their chest in order to initiate their kick rather than bringing their, their heels up? Um, yeah, I mean, it is both. There's, I really don't have a, a good answer for that except just, hey, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Do it with your heels. The, the thing that, that we'll talk about a lot with breaststroke kick is heel speed, right? So you want, obviously, the kick back motion should be, like, powerful and you should get a lot out of it. So it should be like, you should be holding water on it, but bringing it up should be super fast, right? You don't want this 
to take a long time because you want to spend the max amount of time with your leg streamlined and then just bam, go into that kick, right? So the heel speed is going to come from your hamstrings. I guess focusing on the hamstrings with that is, is maybe the way that you would teach that. One of my uh, f- close friends is a great breaststroke coach, uh, Ari Silva, and, and he was telling me that the first thing he looks at is, is hips. He wants to make sure that the hips are continually at the surface and moving forward. Is that something yeah. that you focus on? Yeah, absolutely. Again, in the, in the years where, where it's super easy and I just have breaststroke flowing, my hips are just bam, bam, bam on the surface. Um, if I try to start like forcing the undulation with the chest, because there is a little up and down that I'll do with my chest. Um, if I start forcing that like with the head too, then my hips start to bob um, and just everything's, everything's out of whack. So yeah, hips, hips and legs during the pull should be just dragged straight forward on the surface. That's, that's a perfect stroke. 